Hey everyone, I want to show you how I rebond broken plastic back together. This is not gluing, this is not epoxying, this is physically melting the plastic where it's broken, putting it back together, letting it dry, and then the original molecular bond of the plastic is, in my experience, almost it's either as strong as or almost as strong as before it was broken. What I use is a chemical called MEK, methyl ethyl ketone. You can buy this in any hardware store. Um, it is, I figured this out a long time ago. This complete part was broken off of here. This was cracked on down here. Here's some more pieces I want to rebond back together because I need to mount a motor here and I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna do it. This is an arrow ball clock. This is the large edition of it. I bought this online and when it came in, this was all broken up. Like I said, this whole bar was completely off. This was broken over here and this has to stand together to hold the motor. Um, and again, I figured out a long time ago, I can rebond it with the plastic. I've used it on this plastic, which is roughly 1987. I wish I knew what type of plastic it was. I don't, I just know I can test this whenever I come across broken plastic and either it works or it doesn't. Here is the original size of the arrow ball clock. Uh, I have repaired quite a few broken plastic things on this one, on this style of clock. And these were made from 1979 through 1987. Another thing I did was on our 2005 Forerunner, I was taking it in to get repainted and I removed everything I could to get the best paint job I could. I took off the grill, the headlights, parking lights, running boards, mud flaps, and the roof rack. And everything I read said, when you take these four covers off the roof rack, they're gonna crack. And I was as delicate as I could be. I had the right trim tool and yes, they cracked on me. There's four tabs here that broke right off. Some of them cracked all the way down the side. I did the same method with the same chemical on these and repainted them and beautiful. They're on there. They've been on there for four months. They're not going anywhere. So this is how I do it. In case anybody else out there is interested. All right, so this one I did last night. <clears throat> I just had a rubber band holding them together for keeps the tension on it. And again, this was broken completely off here and here. This whole bar was gone. This was broken down here. And I can stress this all kinds of ways, and it's not coming apart. It is certainly going to do the job that I needed to do to hold this, <clears throat> excuse me, simple motor in place. Um, it actually remelt, I'm gonna melt the plastic and put the plastic back together. <coughs> I'm sorry. And that is what's worked for me. If you can see down in this corner, this is where it was broken. Yes, this stuff is very, very watery and it runs. You have to watch where it runs. Um, here you can see the crack. This whole piece was broken off and then it was broken off also under over here. So let me show you. Get this set up. So what I'm going to do is put this ear back on here. This needs to be here to grab that. That's what's broken off. What I do is I take a syringe, tip it over and draw it in, pulling back on the plunger while it's in there. And then the whole key to this is you slowly have to wet the plastic until it melts enough that it is going to liquefy just the edge and bond. Let me get this in the right 
orientation, so I'm ready for it when it's ready. So I'm going to want when I'm done, right there. All right, so the key to this is you have to get this wet. And when you, when you do this, it, like I said, it's going to want to run. So you hope you're not doing anything too decorative. All I'm doing is kind of letting the bubble form, getting all of it wet. Coming to the other piece, slowly pressing on the plunger, get every little bit of it wet. MEK, methyl ethyl ketone, evaporates very, very quickly. So, a little bit later, um, right now, coming back with another drop, I want to keep it wet. And what the MEK is doing is slowly melting the plastic it's loosening it up enough it's melting the plastic and right here just a matter of time eventually when i do this with the syringe see i can see it getting tacky see it's starting to tack all right so again i have to get it wet keep it wet get all of it because you want the best bond you can get do one, do the other. Get it all, let it get tacky. And again, we're just letting, giving it time. It's physically melting the edges where the MEK is. don't want to be too quick with it because you do want it melted. It's not going to be like a glue. You, you wet the two pieces and stick them together and the glue is going to adhere. it. It's not. You're physically melting the edges of the plastic so that when you attach them, reattach them back together and it dries, it molecularly, they are bonded back together. It's getting there. I can see some of it coming up on my needle. I can see I can actually scrape some of it away. And again, this is extremely watery. It does run. If it runs, you're out of luck. If it runs a little bit, you can't try to wipe it because it's going to make a bigger smear, smudge mess than if you just let it run. So if you're doing this with something that you really have a decorative side, try to keep an eye on that decorative side and just try not to put on too much. Oop. See, that plastic has come off and is clogging my needle. So let me wipe off the needle. That's good, that tells me that it is. Getting the plastic soft and softened up enough. And again, I can see it's really getting there. I'm going to clean off the edge of my needle so the MEK keeps coming out. And all I'm keep doing is keeping this wet. I'm not trying to get it to run, but it evaporates very quickly. I don't want it to dry. I want it to stay wet. I want it to have it keep doing its job of melting the plastic. All right, so we're almost there. I can see the plastic coming off on the tip of my needle. I can feel it. I'm gonna get them wet one more time each. Put them together. I want it to be wet when I put them together. So I'm putting my syringe down. I'm getting my orientation. And if the original piece was a clean break, it really it really falls in place all on its own. All right. It's 
still a little bit on the, it's soft, but I'm not sure it's where I want it to be yet. I'm sorry, it's gonna be tough getting this angle. All right, I see it's drying out. I don't want it to dry out. So I'm gonna apply a little more. Yeah, and that was a big squirt way too much. And once you get it, you get one shot at it. So normally if the crack is a good crack, you'll feel it go right back in place where it was. Because this isn't a piece I think I can put a rubber band on it to hold pressure. So I'm just gonna hold this for a little while. And that's the bulk of it. Um, I've got to hold this longer than I thought I would just to get this to keep lining right. But that is how I do it with the MEK. Um, don't breathe it in, you know, all that kind of stuff. What I normally do too is I'll come along with this and I'll come along the edge and I'll apply a little bit more so it wicks into that joint to keep that joint wet for a while. So it really has time to liquefy and bond. Again, hope that helps. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to write me. Sorry for taking so long. Uh, sorry it's not so professionally done, but I've wanted to get this out for anybody else that might wanna use it, um, especially people in the hobby business, hobby industry. Thanks for watching everybody. God bless.